Hello YouTubers, it's Stevie from So Saves Me and SD Gear and I have got a treat today. We are going to learn how to service a 401. I just got this from a thrift store find. Pretty clean machine, just about stuck. It's stiff as a doorknob. It hasn't been oiled in God knows how long. And we're, I'm going to teach you how to oil this thing, how to get it running. And if you've been watching our videos and following along, you've already seen that I've already rebuilt the motor, serviced it, whatever you want to call it, and it's ready to go. I've yet to put it back in the machine. So let's get into this machine and see what we're going to need to do. I've got a screwdriver, the Singer OEM one actually. These are pretty simple machines. You don't need anything more than a straight screwdriver, I don't believe. Triflow grease. And since this is the first time this machine's been oiled in who knows how long, I got me a can of Triflow spray. Uh, spray superior lubricant really great for blasting on the inside of machines and then a little bottle of just their standard squeeze lubricant so without further ado let's put our hair up get your favorite cup of coffee or hot beverage or whatever you'd like to do and let's dig into this thing now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bottom off of it and I'm gonna get the top off of it now, I have yet to plug this machine in and see if it even works. There's no point, honestly, until we get this thing oiled up. There's no, I mean, it's stiff as a board. It barely, hardly moves. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this nut off the bottom. Try to save my felt. Now, I will say I have smidged this video a little bit. I've already taken it out to the garage, and I've blown all the junk out of it. And you may want to do that. You can use a can of air. Uh, I used an air compressor, much cheaper, at 100 pounds. And I just blew it out really well. And when I blow them out, I also take out the hook and shuttle and bobbin area. Okay. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to take the top off. And these are pretty simple. You have two screws, and this whole top comes off. For those that are a little bit more advanced in doing this, I'm sorry. I am doing this video as if somebody's never had one of these apart before. I'm just going to lift that right up. And then the next thing I generally do is I'm going to take this off. And you simply open it, lift it up, and pull it off. Be cautious. Don't yank on it. You will bust these little pins out, and that sucks when that happens. We'll just set all that stuff aside. Next step is I am going to take this stuff out. So I'm going to lift it up. Get this old needle out of here. We'll throw that away. That's junk. You never want to use a needle that you find on a machine. I'm going to take the foot off. Because for the moment being, I'm not going to need it on there anyways. It's just going to be in the way. I am going to leave the nut on there though. Okay. And then I'm going to lift the throat plate up. Needle, throat plate, whatever you call this thing. And I'm going to slide it out because you want to clean up all the lint underneath it. In fact, my air compressor does a pretty good job, but there's a hunk right there. We're going to get that out of there as well. And then while I'm here with the screwdriver, I'm just going to knock any of the lint out between the teeth. Okay. You've zoomed really close in. These are kind of tricky to remove the bobbin case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift that up and I'm going to push it over. And that's all that it should do. Don't try to force it. It should lift up easily and come over. If not, you may want to need to start oiling it immediately. And then I'm going to slide that over and pull that out. And one of the first things I am going to do to start servicing this machine is I'm going to shake my triflow up. And see that little hole down in the bottom of there? This hole rarely, rarely gets oiled. You need to put oil in that from time to time. And we're just going to start with that. That'll take a little while to soak in. There's actually a packing, if I'm not mistaken, up underneath there that keeps the shaft lubricated. And then I'm going to go ahead and slide that over, get it out of the way, and I'm going to close that so I don't bust it off. And here comes the fun part. And I know some of you are going to be like, oh my god, it's dirty, oh my gosh, you need to clean this with alcohol, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to let you in on a secret. This Triflow oil that you use, it does have a solvent built into it. 
it will actually wash these parts. So the first thing I'm going to do is shake my can up really, really swell. Put the straw on it. And I am just literally, anything that moves gets oiled. Make sure you pay, pay special attention to these oil holes. And at this point, if you're wise, you will have a rag up underneath this machine because after you're done, this thing's going to be dripping oil for a while. And see, yeah, this is, that's stuck. That one's not bad. anything if it doesn't move it's not gonna move let that tri flow do its trick trust me when it gets in there deep in there it will loosen up everything in there now I'm gonna move this gear back and forth yeah it's pretty free like I said anything that moves you oil now if you get oil everywhere it's not gonna hurt nothing other than make a mess. But like I said, you should have a rag up underneath there. and Be prepared that this thing's gonna be dripping oil, but rather it having dripping oil than not have enough on it. I'm still stuck. I don't know if I can, nope. We're just gonna leave it. It will free up, hopefully. This is why the 403s are a little bit more popular than 401s. They have less junk inside of them. And already I can tell that's a lot freer than it was. And then if you want, you can wipe off this old grease. Knock it off if you want. But as you can see, it's already softened up from the tri-flow itself. Let's do the needle bars and stuff. Same ordeal. I'm just going to take my spray can and anything that moves, I'm just going to coat the whole thing. And just blast it. This is going to do a lot of things. It's going to lubricate it. I'm going to take this little deal off the top here. It's going to lubricate it. It's going to wash the old stuff. Always put a little oil on that so it screws nice and smooth. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. And it's also, this tri-flow is also really good for eating off old stickers and stuff. Pay attention, there's a bunch of little holes on all this stuff that you're supposed to drip oil into. And already, look how much more free that is. I couldn't hardly get it to move. And only if we can get that back stitch thingy my bob working. And you want to move everything as you're doing this. Make sure you get everything in all the moving parts. And that's that. We'll move on. You could take the tension assembly apart and do it that way, but I cheat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rag right here, I'm going to fold it over, and then I'm going to take some tri-flow oil and just saturate a little bit, okay? With the foot up and the tension on zero, I'm going to take the rag 
and I am going to finagle it in between these discs and rub it back and forth to polish it. You want to make sure you get all the way up in there, all the way around, and just polish them. And you can see that this uh, rag is kind of turned into a murky. That old oil, it gets everywhere and eventually turns into tar. Let me get you on the other side and I'll show you what it looks like from Since the other side. Since I started doing it this way, I'm going to do this second tension. Be aware that there's two tension assemblies in here, two tension discs. Ever since I started doing this, you know, I haven't had hardly any tension issues in any of my machines, and I'm yet to have to tear one of these things apart again, ever again. So I'm just going to rub it in there. Now, I'm going to lower my foot and increase the tension so I can really get up in there. Let's do the other side. Lift the foot. Kind of a pain in the butt. Nope. There we go. Drop the foot. And that's the gunk that we got out of it. and we're looking at the front, I am going to go ahead and do this as well. Get all that sprayed in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and set it to about center here. Squirt a little bit in between. And screw it down. And get some of that tri-flow worked up inside of there so this screws nice and smooth. should be a little stiff. You don't want this loose loose, but I've ran into a couple of them that were just so stiff you couldn't hardly move them without using a cheater bar, and it shouldn't be that stiff. I'm just going to work that back and forth a little bit, and that feels pretty good. There we are. And then, you're going to see a hole here. I'm going to put a little in there, a hole there. A hole there, 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 and there. I'm going to put a little oil in those two and let that soak in as well. Then, while we're here, I'm just going to go ahead and do this as well. Get all this soaked in. The upside is, is tri-flow does not attract lint or dirt. I'm going to move that up and down. And I'm even going to spray a little bit down in here. So all that runs smooth. Make sure these aren't sticking. Yeah, and we're in good shape. Like I said, you might want to keep a rag around because you're going to get tri-flow all over the place. But as far as I know, it hasn't yet to eat any of the finish or paint off of anything, and it's safe on plastic and nylon parts. And while I bring this down, I'm going to take this rag and we'll polish off the old tar on this. Needle bar. And then I've got a little oil on there. I'm just gonna go ahead and polish this guide as well. Hey, look at that. and run it across all this and kind of polish that up too. In fact, now's a good time to take my nut off. I'll just take this nut off and really get it polished and shined up. Notice how that tri-flow literally just dissolves the old grease and grime when you do this. Just like
like that. Lower. And by now your hands are probably completely full of oil and greasy and you got the stuff everywhere. Thank goodness the stuff is non-toxic. You can keep it wiped off if you want. I would recommend it, hence the old rag. While I've got it on its side, I'm going to go ahead and fill these two holes up. And what this is, is these two holes are the two bearings on that shaft that runs the lower. And while it's sitting on its side like this, I'm just going to let that soak in. That way it gets all that oil out down in there. Alright, now we're on the bottom end of this thing and you can see all the parts and you noticed my motor is gone. This is the one that I rebuilt the motor on and did the video for that. And let's just oil all this up stuff up too. Anything that moves, hit. Pay close attention to the parts that have a little hole in them because that's where the oil is supposed to go. After you get all of this really soaked down and the machine is really lubricated, from here on out, if you continue to keep it lubricated, you shouldn't have to go to this extent. I just like doing it this way because it blasts oil everywhere and you're pretty well guaranteed that you're getting everything. And the machine is as free as possible, plus it helps clean the parts. Mm -hmm. And you see I'm just moving things around as I do this. Just like that. And see now I'm getting about almost two whole turns out of this thing. But the only thing that we're jammed up on yet is my adjustment there. So that does, that's the oiling section of this. Piece of cake, not a big deal. If you get the oil on the wires, you're not gonna start a massive fire. Tri-Flow is non-flammable, uh, really a non-flammable oil. It'll smolder, but it won't catch on fire like propane or gasoline or anything like that. The aerosol is, it is not exactly fireproof. It will catch flames, but that's because the propellant is propane. So I don't recommend spraying the aerosol around the motor area while you're, you know, running it. That's bad news. The motor has sparks inside of it and it would ignite. But we have no motor, we don't have it plugged in, and we're just going to lube it up really good. And that does the lubing part. At the beginning of this, you've seen me spray some tri-flow down into this area. And the reason why is because you need to make sure this is free. I loosen this up and I should be able to spin this wheel freely and as you see that tri-flow has already worked its way in there and it works just the way it should. You shouldn't, it shouldn't be gripping this and this center shaft should not be spinning at all but for demonstration purposes I'm gonna go ahead and take it off. This was an awfully clean machine. It wasn't horribly and it definitely wasn't oiled with nasty oil based oil. So we're gonna take that screw out which actually keeps you from completely unscrewing this knob. Okay, and then this is the clutch in the center. And I'm just going to pull this wheel back and pay attention to which direction you pulled that off on. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pull this entire thing out. Now you may want to wipe this off if it's completely packed, wipe off the inside, but more importantly you're going to want to put some tri-flow oil on this shaft here so it can freely spin on it. And as you can see from this video, it's fairly clean inside of there. But I'm still going to go ahead and wipe it off since I got it all apart and put a drop of tri-flow on that and put it back together. Get you a little closer and then I'm going to wipe some of this tri-flow off my desk and use that wet rag and I'm just going to reach in there and wipe off the heavy doesn't have to be perfectly clean because as soon as we grease this, it's going to have junk all over it. I'm going to wipe this shaft off. And then I'm going to wipe this clutch off. Like I said, this one's pretty clean. It's not in bad shape. Some of these I tear apart and they're absolutely gummed up with some nasty, gritty, old, gross oil. And again, take the soaked area of your rag and I'm going to wipe 
the heavy off of this. Now there's no reason, unless there's bits of metal or big grains of dirt inside this Texolite gear, then there's no reason to really wash, wash it down or do anything massive with it. But you might want to inspect it while you have it out. Make sure there's no teeth missing or any dents or anything along those lines. You can buy that gear fairly reasonably. It's not overly expensive. And then I'm going to go ahead and wipe the inside of it off. And then since I have the wheel completely off, I'm going to find some clean spot on my rag and I'm just going to go ahead and wipe the inside of that off to make it look nice. And then while I'm at it, since I have the wheel off, I'm going to go ahead and see that grid on the outer edge with a little triflo soaked rag. I'm just going to wipe it off too. It'll make it look nice. And see how that trifolo literally just eats dirt and grime right off. And it gives it a nice sheen to it. And then I'm just going to put a drop of oil on that. I don't know why I started to put it back on. Like so. Put it back in there. And it should freely spin, spin on there. Remember how I told you to remember which direction you pulled this off? It only goes on in one direction. And, just for a tip of the day, it can go on either way. I don't remember which way it actually came off because the shaft is spun, but we'll find out. You got a 50-50 if you put it on the, the correct direction. So there, I'm tightened. I'm going to put my screw back in. And you'll know if you got it on the wrong direction if you loosen it and your shaft doesn't and your wheel doesn't spin freely on the shaft then you need to take it apart flip that around and then put it back in but 50 50 I got it right now that I've soaked this machine down with so much oil and got it completely freed up look how look how nice and easy it spins this is how a 401 should run now of course I don't have a motor in there so if you have your motor in there, it's not going to do that because you're going to have motor drag. But if you have no motor in there, that's how it should, it should spin very freely. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to take some of my rag and wipe off some of this excess oil that I've slobbed all over the place. If you don't have oil all over your desk, then you didn't do it to my standards. One part. We're almost finished. The 401 actually has grease points. So I'm going to take my TriFlow grease. And you can buy this off of a link on the bottom of this video. And I kind of like this little Singer brush. I've got a dozen of them. They come with everything. So I found it works really great for applicating. And the first thing I'm going to grease is this guy right here. I'm just going to put some on my brush, and I'm just going to roll it over and pack some grease in there. Just like so. And then you're going to see that there's a gear right next to it. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to take some grease. I'm going to do the same thing and I'm just going to fill these teeth with this brush full of grease. The upside is, is the motor area is cavitated, so if you get too much oil or too much grease, all it really does is just kind of makes a mess. The TriFlow grease doesn't ever get nasty or hard or gross, unlike normal greases. And then I'm going to run it the opposite direction and run some extra grease the other way. And you'll probably notice that your brush is getting black and nasty. One other thing that I generally do is I'm going to brush some grease on these cam stacks. That's probably what you'll find in your 401. The fingers are completely packed and crudded up with old grease. The grease will make the uh, fingers run across this cam stack nice and smooth. And if you want to get overzealous, you could pull the cam stack and grease. We ought to do that actually, so I could show you how to do that. After I'm done doing this, so I can get my fingers nice and filthy. And 
You don't have to go completely nuts with this grease. It's pretty good stuff. It sticks really well. So there we are. Now I'm going to take my brush and my rag. I'm going to take my brush and my rag. I'm just going to clean off the dirty. See how that triflow traps oil, old oil, dirt, grease? Suppose, take my screwdriver here, and we'll just take this guy off. And we will, you'll have to, I'm going to put that one all the way down. take the whole cam stack off and you'll find that there is another gear below there I do put a little grease on that gear sometimes you can sneak without getting it without having to pull that off and while I'm here I'm also gonna take this gritty crap out because it's actually an oil path you can run oil down the cam to the holes on the cam stack and what it'll do is it'll drip oil down in there and it'll lubricate these parts down below that you cannot see. So I'm just going to go ahead and wipe all the gunk out of it. Sometimes you have to do this, sometimes you don't. You can, it's not necessary. If you want to do a really swell job, I recommend it. And what we're going to do is... run some oil down in there. And then while I got it apart, this is the shaft that the cam stack actually runs on. So we'll just wipe it off. Run some oil down there. Now, there is a gear right there. I'm going to take some grease. I'm going to slam some grease on it. I'll put a little grease on this shaft. There's your cam stack. If you want, you can wipe off the gunk, the old gunk. You don't have to go nuts, because it's just going to get gunky again. In fact, you can see this one's a little on the rusty side. Won't hurt nothing. If you want to get super zealous, you can go through, pull the gunk out of all the teeth and the gears. It's totally up to you. You can brush it out. Just to get the heavy off. Like so. I'm reach down there. I see a piece of gunk right in the path. Squeeze a little grease into all these teeth. and wiggle it down on in there. Like so. And there you go, you've maintained the cam stack. Probably not a bad idea, especially if the machine's been around for a while. Remember, you're working with a pretty old machine. It's been around for a while. If you're lucky enough that you find one in almost new condition, great, but let's face it, most of these machines have been heavily, heavily used. Just like that, we're greased up. Let's go to the bottom and grease the bottom. Grease and our brush out. The next thing we need to do is we need to grease the gears in the lower end, and you'll find a set there and there. The easiest way to do that is just to pack a little grease in there. 
If you over grease it, it won't be a big deal. If you under grease it, that's kind of a problem. You want to make sure you get enough on there. And remember, we did tri-flow oil the heck out of this thing, so this grease is going to dissolve a little bit because the tri-flow and the grease mixes. And that won't hurt nothing. If your gears are packed full of grease with old stuff in the center, you might want to scrape that stuff off. And you'll notice that your brush is probably getting black and gross. Like I said, the Tri-Flow actually cleans stuff. So I'm going to spin it around a little bit. Oh, and that's a good sound. The sticky sound. I don't know if you can hear that on video or not. And while I'm at it, I'm going to scrape off the excess. And this will just give you a smooth operation. The grease will stick to it a lot longer than the oil will. And there you have it. You've greased it. Finished with this machine on the servicing end of it. So the next step is I need to put my motor back in there. Can't run the machine without a motor. So I'm just going to slide it right up on in there. And there's a plate that goes with it. I'm going to hook up my wires. It really doesn't matter which wire goes where, it's the same thing. This plate only goes on one direction. It actually has some tabs. You can get it on there, line up or screw. And this is what actually keeps the electrical from jiggling loose and the motor from coming on out. This actually secures it all. Kind of ingenious actually. So there we go, I've got a motor installed, just like so. Then I'm going to put my lower plate on. Now you don't have to do this right now. In fact, um, I would recommend that you just leave a rag underneath it for a while, so that way you can drip dry it. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to put it back on. you can see this really well I'm going to put this back cover on and you will see that it's got two pins so you want to line up the top one first and then the bottom one should line up and it just drops right on it do that from another angle so I'm gonna line up the top one and that should get my bottom one down in there just like so do not force it or you'll probably end up breaking it I've seen a lot of broken ones now before we put our top on, we just put our motor in, and we need to grease this this area too. So I'm just going to take some and squeeze it and run it this direction so it'll suck it up underneath there and just pack her full, like so. And I'm going to run it backwards, and then just for fun, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to brush it up and down the motor gear. Okay. And then I take my normal tri-flow oil and way down at the bottom of the gear I'm going to put a few drops because that's what's actually lubricating that top motor bearing. Got a nice sticky sound to it. Perfect. Next step, put the top on.
just like that. Now we probably ought to put our hook and shuttle in, bobbin, case, whatever, and our needle plate. And before I do that, the first thing I do is I look inside this groove and make sure it's not all packed full of junk. If there is, get a brush, brush it out. That needs that channel needs to be clean. And as you can see, this one's fairly clean. And I can I could usually I usually use the same brush that I was using grease on. And I'm t you know what? Even though that looked clean, I still had a big old hunk of lint in there. So it's a good idea to just brush all that off. And I'm going to brush out the inside. Yeah, I had two big hunks of lint in there. Just like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and run my brush across the hook here. Make sure there's no junk wadded up in there that my air compressor missed. We're going to lift this guy back up and slide it over. Now this is extremely hard to see, but this actually hooks up way back in there. And you want to go in at an angle like so. And that channel that we just cleared out actually runs up against a lip inside of here. So if your hook and shuttle isn't flush with the outside, or if your, if your bobbin case is not flush with the hook, then it's in there incorrectly. A lot of people get this wrong. So make sure it goes in there and you shouldn't have to force it. It should just drop in there and slide over. And as far as this locking piece, it should just slide over and drop right on down in there. If you have to force it over, then you did something wrong and you should have a little bit of play right there. See? And then to get our I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to take my tri-soaked, tri-flow soaked rag and wipe this off real well. Get all the old grit and nasty off of it. It'll eat it right out. Slide it in. Lock it down. And that's it. Now the fun part is we got to hook it up and see if it sews. servicing process I also take the pedal and I tear it apart and inspect the inside of it make sure there's no bare wires uh, a dead short like I said I haven't even plugged this machine in yet and I'm not going to until I check over the wire make sure there's no cracks shorts uh, anything along those lines clean the green out of the end of the connector if necessary but I want to look inside this pedal and check to make sure that it looks okay. Just do a visual inspection. Get the screws out. There's four screws that hold the whole thing together. There we are. And like so. And it looks pretty darn good. You know, I don't... The pedal's not busted. Got good function. Wires aren't are connected. They're not shorting. Perfect. So this looks good. But while I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing. I'm going to take a little drop of TriFlow and put it right there. Have you ever had one of these things squeak at you? It's irritating. And then I'm going to take a little bit of TriFlow grease. Like I said this stuff is non-flammable. It'll smolder but it won't catch fire. And I'm going to put it right down in there where that pin is. So I get a nice smooth action. Now I don't oil any of the variable pop resistor or any of this resistor here. You shouldn't need to lubricate that at all. But I am going to take just a tad of tri-flow grease, not a whole lot, and I'm going to put a little bit of grease on these two pins that right in here. And I'm going to put a little grease down in that area. Keep it from squeaking. And then we're going to put it back together. I'm also going to visually inspect the contacts. Make sure they're not burnt off. There's holes in them. Perfect. Just like so. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop this piece back in here. Get 
my little feeties back into place. Drop my cord in. This is one thing I hate about these. They are a pain in the butt with these little rubber feeties. And you can do this. There's different pedals out there, but I generally inspect all of them. Because you just, you never know what you're going to find. You might find a piece, I actually found a piece of aluminum foil in one one time that was wrapped around the contact because the contact was burnt through. That is not a safe way to fix a pedal. <laughs> if the pedal's that bad, then you should just get a replacement. <laughs> they make lots of generics that are great. like so and then I'm gonna check out my cable here and it looks okay but I'll probably take some anti-corrosive solution and run down in there by anti-corrosive solution this green the easiest way to eat that off really easily is coke coca-cola eats it right out got it all together I went ahead and plugged it in we'll turn the light on see if the light works hey the light works let's press our pedal and see what it sounds like Pretty good. Just for grins. Hey, thanks for watching, and I uh, I hope that you tune in because I'm going to thread this guy up and see what it can and see how well it sews and make sure it works really well and. Get it ready for sale. This one will be for sale very shortly. Uh, thank you for watching, and if you like our videos, please subscribe, put a like. Maybe if you got a comment or a question, put it below. And I am going to find me some thread. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching all of our videos at So Saves Me. And I am Stevie from SD Gear, and I just wanted to say if you really like our videos, please click that button at the bottom that says subscribe. And if you need supplies or you're going to do, attempt to do all these things yourself using our tutorial, please go and click the link below and buy some TriFlow from Amazon. We get a little kickback for it, and it's a little motivation for us to keep making these wonderful videos. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them at the bottom. If you have a machine that you'd like us to service or maybe go through, let us know. Hit us up on our Facebook page, and we'll see if we can find one of those machines and get you a tutorial made off of that thing. Thank you.